you've been to other dimensions. Each has had its own injustices. Maybe that's why my soul still burns. Hell yeah! What the hell are you on? Hello and welcome to another episode of KKP Rhapsody, where we recap the best gaming and pop culture news of the week. From your gaming event casualties to your upcoming Marvel Cinematic Nonsense, we've got you covered. I'm your disembodied voice, Mr. Tuffy, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to us as well as click on that notification button for awesome Southeast Asian-made video features and gaming recaps. We always have new content every Wednesday and Friday. And with that, let's start. Christian Bale, the star of those Christopher Nolan Batman films, among many others, is set to play the main villain in the upcoming Thor 4, Love and Thunder. This is according to a quip from co-star Tessa Valkyrie Thompson. Our very own comics lord had his educated takes on who the main villain of Thor 4 will be. It's either A. Gore the God Butcher from the Jason Aaron Thor God of Thunder run, which happens to introduce Jane Foster Thor, B. Mangog, the manifestation of rage from the Vanir, aka Asgard Hulk but evil. And C. Karl Borson, the Asgardian god of fear and self-titled Midgard Serpent, whom Thor vanquished but at the cost of himself. Which would be a great way for Jane to enter the fray as a new god of thunder. These are all speculations of course, but it'll be interesting to see which path Marvel will take. Bandai Namco's umpteen anime game based on Akira Toriyama's Cash Cow has sold over 2 million copies worldwide, to nobody's surprise. Even if the game was a piece of Namekian turd, it will still sell gangbusters. Thankfully, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is just… average. Not completely Raditz or Krillin levels of bad, but just as lackluster as the Boo Saga. After 16 long years, 2K games are allowed to make NFL games, thanks to a new deal made between the two. What does this mean for EA? Well, they're still doing American football games, though their contract with the NFL will end in 2021. All I can say is this, it's good to have competition, lest you want your American football games to be complacent and average at best. Activision has made it official. They're now in the Battle Royale game with Call of Duty Warzone, and people are hyped. Within 24 hours after the game's release, Warzone has accumulated over 6 million players. It beats Apex Legends' 2.5 million unique user count at its peak 24-hour launch back in February 2019. Keep in mind though, that Call of Duty is a super large franchise, so 6 million is pretty much on par with their brand strength, though that number is still friggin' huge. So what sets this apart from other Battle Royale games? Well, there's the patented Call of Duty shooting mechanics, the second chance Gulab feature, a huge map that can accommodate 150 players at a time, and it's free to play. Makes you wonder if Epic Games will use Warzone's Gulab feature in their own Battle Royale. The ESA has spoken. E3 2020 is cancelled. No more business meetings and potential partnerships. No 2020 mid-year Los Angeles holidays for members of the Southeast Asian press. So what about those announcements and other reveals? Well, Xbox and Ubisoft are on top of the game. They'll be planning digital events of their next-gen and new gaming reveals by the middle of the year. We're not sure if Warner Brothers might do the same. Sources say they were supposed to reveal their new games based on the Harry Potter and Batman licenses, as well as Rocksteady's latest game. No harm in sharing the trailers when it's ready though. You'll still get your coverage, right? Speaking of epidemics, that nasty old COVID-19 is putting a hamper on some big movie releases. Like the live-action Mulan, which was supposed to be out 27th March, and the X-Men movie New Mutants, which was initially set for a 3rd of April release. Ooh ooh, and A Quiet Place 2, also initially scheduled for this month. And that new Fast and Furious 9 movie, coming out next year instead. No new dates have been announced for these movies yet. This might be bad for outgoing movie watchers, but one sector's misfortune is another sector's gain and net profit. Good news, there's gonna be a Demon Slayer game for PS4 next year. Better news, an iOS and Android Demon Slayer is in the works as well, slated for this year. 
Bad news, it's probably going to be a 3D arena fighter like the Naruto games for the former and the mobile RPG with flash graphics for the latter. You know what they say, the more things change... The rumours are true, folks. Horizon Zero Dawn is no longer a PS4 exclusive. It will be getting a PC port that will be out sometime in summer 2020. However, this port is going to be a rare occurrence. Sony Worldwide Studios head Herman Hulst said that releasing one first-part AAA title to PC doesn't mean that every game now will come to PC. Horizon Zero Dawn was just a great fit. The company will remain 100% committed to dedicated hardware. If you're a raging Sony fanboy, well, you may not take that news lightly. To the rest of the sane world and people who like to share their toys, well, that's good news, since Horizon Zero Dawn is an awesome action-adventure title and needs to be shared with the rest of the world who do not own PS4s. Thanks again for watching this week's Highlights and Recaps. And again, be sure to subscribe to us as well as click on that notification button for awesome Southeast Asian-made video features and gaming recaps. We always have new content every Wednesday and Friday. Until then, that's the way the world pixelates.